Next up, blockchain voting shines at the Michi Michigan Democratic Convention. And this is one of my pet projects because I've always believed that, that blockchain voting can really change things for the better. I mean, blockchain can change th things for the better, uh, you know, end of statement. But voting, I feel, is just one of those things that really needs a major upgrade. If you think banking is old school and is, is predicated on a very old technology, have you ever gone to vote? Do you know how old-fashioned that is? You stand in line, these super long lines, and you're just waiting there for sometimes hours. Sometimes, I mean, in some polling place, it's like it's like eight hours plus. And you're just sitting there and you're waiting, and you have to step up, and you have to show your you know your ID, and they have to you know do everything. You're, okay, great. Then you then you step up to a voting booth, and if the you know if the tablets aren't working, which has happened last year, then you got to put it on paper, and you're like really on paper. Make sure you have the, the the right pencil, and you have to you know set it all in, and then go through the things. And it's like this is where we're at in 2000. Well, this is 2019. In 2020, are you kidding me? I can open up a bank account from anywhere in the United States, and it takes like 20 minutes. I can verify everything, and I can start swapping out money all over the place. But yet, I can't do a vote. This is ridiculous. And mind you, banks suck. So something like this, I don't see why it can't happen. Anyhow, what's going on here? So blockchain-based voting app Votes has recorded nearly 2,000 votes at the virtual Michigan Democratic Party convention. Votes has conducted pilots in several U.S. states, including Arizona, Michigan, and West Virginia. MIT researchers, however, blasted votes early this year, blasted, claiming the app was not secure against hacking attacks. Okay, so here's what's happening. Votes announced today, this is actually a couple days ago, the successful completion of voting on the platform at Michigan's Virtual Democratic Party, held August 29th to August 30th, during which delegates remotely nominated candidates for the state's Supreme Court and other positions. Nearly 2,000 delegates voted using Votes' smartphone voting platform. So, Again, I do not see what we cannot use a smartphone. If I can open up a bank account, if I can get life insurance, if I can get medical insurance, but yet I can't vote online, what is the problem? And before we start talking about fraud and all the things that we hear about in the news, are we not smart enough as a society to come together and overcome the hurdles and barriers that may lead us to some type of fraudulent voting count? I mean, look, we're in 2020. Why can't technology combat that? I just don't see how we can't do it. Anyhow, making headlines as COVID-19 keeps citizens at home and mail-in voting becomes a hot-button political issue. As a precaution against COVID-19, all convention participants attend virtually from their homes. And if you believe in coronavirus, I personally happen to believe it's a real thing, which I should because my nephew passed away from it a couple months ago. I just don't understand why we all have to stand in line to vote and we have the technology right here. We don't have to crowd together in these small little places, you know, with our masks on and try not to touch anything and try not to get infected. We can just do this, you know, distance wise. We've had all the time in the world to figure this out, but here we are. Of 2,092 delegates, 91% voted using the Votes app, while the balance voted using a help desk phone system. Great phone system, sure. There were so many unique challenges with this year's convention because of the pandemic, but the votes platform eased many of our concerns, Michigan Democratic Party Executive Director Chrissy Jensen said. Votes enable delegates to be verified remotely and participants through their smartphones. The convenience, safety, and accessibility of voting this way was eye-opening for everyone who participated. Well, yeah, because you have everything there at your fingertips. Super simple. Let's just do it that way. Votes has helped facilitate three previous Michigan Democratic Party conventions using an in-person tablet-based system in the past. It also facilitated remote voting at the Arizona Republican State Convention earlier in 2020. Votes came in the public eye in 2018 thanks to a pilot that allowed West Virginia residents to vote in midterm elections using the platform. After deeming the pilot successful, state officials planned to roll out the tool for overseas residents in every county for 2020 voting, which would have been fantastic. And that could have kick-started it, I mean, just in West Virginia, and then probably spread across the whole country. Great. However, they changed course after the MIT researchers claimed to uncover security vulnerabilities in the vote system. Votes responded, stating that the researchers performed their analysis in an, on an outdated version of the mobile platform and relied on assumptions about the server-side architecture of the system, which they never accessed. So, you know when you update all your apps on the phone? The reason why you do that sometimes, not every time, is because of uh, some type of vulnerability. So if the MIT researchers were using an outdated version, 
why the hell did they do it like that when they could have just said, hey, we're going to test this and we want to see what's going on, so we need your updated version. Why the hell did they do that? I don't know. I don't know. Seems kind of sketchy. But they kind of, you know, screwed everything up for the rest of the voting because they just uh, botched it. Whatever. Votes also pointed out that other CERT research teams have been given full access to source code and other components of the system. It criticized MIT study authors for remaining anonymous prior to publication. So that's a real bummer. Uh, they could have done a lot of great things, but uh, because of that research, it uh, got shelved until right now. So I will say this. I mean, coronavirus does suck. I mean, obviously, for a lot of people. But uh, it is pushing us into the forefront of technology because this is how we should have done it the whole time. So let's take a look at votes. So votes, I think, is awesome. Uh, if I was part of the delegation, I would definitely be looking at these guys and going, hey, you've already done it all already for you know two, three years. Let's see what you can do moving forward. So let's just scroll on this. Okay, what's this? You know, in this video, I'm not going to play it, but it was pretty interesting because they had uh, some people who were disabled, some people who were overseas, some people who had, uh, they were limited in vision and hearing. And and uh, so those people, it's very hard to go out there and vote. When you're able-bodied, sure. I mean, it still sucks. But I mean, imagine if you, you want to vote, but physically you just can't get out there or for location. So why can't we just use something like this? It seems a lot easier than you know, mail-in ballots and all that stuff. So scrolling down, there was just one thing I wanted to read. Yeah, this one right here. So this is from somebody who's visually impaired. Uh, he says, this is the perfect method of voting because I didn't have to go anywhere. I didn't have to find someone to drive me or get my wife to take the whole day off. I was able to do everything at home. Voting app was perfect, very accessible. Utilize the voice over my phone. It was a great experience. So again, I mean, why can't we just do it like this? And this is how it works. I thought this was pretty cool. So there's just really, there's five steps. So you request mobile voting. So you just submit a request to receive your ballot via smartphone. You download the app. You verify your entity, your identity. And this, I think, is the biggest part here. So how do they do that? So it's a three-step process. And I don't know. I'm guessing. I'm not for sure. But on, like, my iPhone, like, it's there's a biometric available. So I just put my thumb in there and it unlocks the actual phone. So if you can verify your identity with that, with a thumbprint, that's a hell of a lot safer or a lot easier than going to a polling station with an ID, maybe that's you, maybe it's not, I don't know. But your thumbprint is kind of hard to hack, I would say. But then also, I would I, I read somewhere something about like face imaging software and things like that, or verify in some other way. But again, it doesn't matter. If I can open up a bank account, why can't I vote? Anyhow, then you vote, and then you verify it. It says you'll receive an anonymous receipt, so you can verify your selections, which I think is a big thing because in some different places, they were talking about people would, would vote for a certain party, then they would get the printout and it was for the exact opposite party. So I don't know what the hell happened there. But here you get to verify your vote. This is what it is and off it goes. And the great thing here is with the blockchain, you would be able to verify everything from start to finish. And that's the big deal about distributed ledger technology. So I think it's a fantastic uh, way to do things. What do you, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on.